a number of different organisms determine sex of individuals in a few different ways. First, there's a broad difference between organisms that use environmental cues like temperature, pH, or social conditions to determine whether or not an individual will be a male or a female or a hermaphrodite in organisms that have hermaphrodite sexes. But many organisms on the planet use genetics to determine who's going to be a male and who's going to be a female or a hermaphrodite. In the fruit fly Drosophila melanogaster, there is a genetic trigger that determines whether or not an organism will be a male or a female, and that's the ratio of X chromosomes to autosomes. This is a diploid species, so there are two, normally two copies of every chromosome. And what that X autosome ratio means is that we know that females have two X chromosomes, so they're diploid for the X chromosome, and they also are diploid in the autosomes. So that makes a sex chromosome to autosome ratio of one to one, two to two. Males, however, have only one X chromosome for every diploid set of autosomes. So they have a ratio of 0.5. They've only got one X chromosome for every pair of autosomes. And a lot of work, this was the first organism in which the genetic basis of sex determination was identified. It turns out that organisms that have this one-to-one -one ratio have a female version of a protein called sex lethal, which is abbreviated SXL. And if you have two copies of the X chromosome, you make a female version of sex lethal which causes the production of a female version of a protein called transformer, which creates a female version of a protein called double sex, which after a long series of other genetic moves, creates the expression, transcription and translation of female specific genes. And in males, when you have one fewer X chromosome, then you make no sex lethal, which causes a male-specific version of the transformer protein to be made, which encodes a male-specific version of the double sex protein, which produces male individuals. So in sum, in flies, it's the number of X chromosomes relative to the number of autosomes, this ratio, that controls sex. Now contrast that with humans, where we have also, generally speaking, males and females. But instead, we have XX females and XY males. It's not the number of X chromosomes that causes sex determination in humans, it's the presence or absence of the Y chromosome. So if you have a Y chromosome, it contains a gene called SRY for SOX9 related on the Y chromosome. Don't need to memorize that and it controls the expression of male-specific genes. If you don't have a Y chromosome, then you don't have the SRY gene, and so XX individuals don't turn on male development genes, they become female. This has led to a kind of erroneous assumption that female is sort of the quote-unquote default sex in humans, which is, I suppose, one way of looking at it, but it's the presence or absence of this gene that causes sex determination in humans. So I'd like you to be able to compare and contrast sex determination in flies and humans and explain how they're similar in terms of how genetics control sex and yet how they're different. A third type of organism I wanna look at is the worm. And when I say worm, I mean C. elegans. Cenorhabditis elegans. It's not the only worm, but it's the best studied worm in terms of genetics, especially in terms of sex determination. Now, C. elegans has a couple of different sexes. Instead of males and females, we have hermaphrodites, which is a combination of both the male and the female symbol, and rare males. And there are chromosomes that control this difference as well. Hermaphrodites in C. elegans have two X chromosomes. Males only have one X chromosome, and so they're hemizygous. They do not have a Y chromosome or a second X chromosome. So this 
null, zero, means there is no chromosome there. So hermaphrodites have two X chromosomes, males have one X chromosome. And this difference, again, this is going to set up, just like in Drosophila, a difference in the ratio of X chromosomes to autosomes, where it's even in hermaphrodites, but males have half of an X chromosome for every autosome, essentially. And the way that this works in Cenorhabditis is that there's a cascade, much like this sequence of genes in Drosophila, there's a sequence of genes, TRA2, not double sex, the FEM genes, sorry, I was thinking about Drosophila still, there are three FEM genes, we're just going to represent them as FEM, a gene called TRA1, and then an output from this pathway. And this is a repression cascade. So each of these genes represses the next. And what TRA1's job is, is to repress the expression of male-specific genes. So you can also think of this as TRA1 activates hermaphrodite or female-related genes. So in a hermaphrodite, when the X to autosome ratio is 1, we're going to produce hermaphrodites. And in that case, what happens is TRA2 is present, it's active. And this is how a repression cascade works. When TRA2 is present, that means the FEM proteins are not produced. They normally repress TRA1. So with TRA2 present, FEM1 is absent. In its absence, because it normally turns off TRA1 when you don't have the FEM genes, TRA1 is on, and its job is to turn off male-specific genes, so you don't have them, and TRA1 turns on the production of hermaphrodite-specific genes. So that's the situation when the sex chromosome to autosome ratio is 1. TRA2 is on, that turns off the FEMS, which turns on the TRA1 gene, which activates hermaphrodite-specific development patterns. When you only have half of an X chromosome per autosome, or 1X for every diploid pair of autosomes, TRA2 is inactive, and that means that the FEM genes are turned on. They turn off TRA1, so TRA1 is no longer able to repress male-specific genes, meaning they're turned on, and it's no longer able to turn on the hermaphrodite-specific genes, meaning they're off. And that's how males and hermaphrodites are genetically controlled in C. elegans and in other species that are closely related as well. It's again, like Drosophila, the number of X chromosomes to autosomes that dictates that pattern.